Space is big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. And so are many objects in space, like nebulae. Many of these are so big in fact that they won't fit onto the sensor of your camera in a single shot. So how do you take beautiful pictures of them? Well, mosaics. Today, we're going to walk through a super simple way to make mosaics using Nina. This is perfect for imaging large nebulae that don't fit into a single frame on your camera with your telescope. We're also going to be taking care of those pesky flat frames while we're at it to make sure that our final images look really nice. This will be a two part video series. The first where we walk through the setup and imaging of the mosaic. The second where we dive into editing and combining our mosaic panels to create our final image. So make sure you're subscribed to not miss part two. I will also be putting up my raw data and sequence settings for this and the next video on my Patreon page. So if you want to follow along exactly as you can. Check that out in the video description below if you're interested. For this video, I'll be photographing the Cygnus loop region but you can follow along with any target that works for you in your current night sky. If you're not sure how to find good targets to image, be sure to leave a comment down below so that I know that's a subject you would like me to create a video about in the future. Now, I have my laptop down here that I'll be looking at so that we can walk through this together as we start the process by planning out what our imaging session is gonna look like. Before we get started, I am using the latest nightly 1.11 version of Nina, which has the excellent new sequencer built in. So make sure you have that version downloaded on your computer to follow along. Once Nina is up and running, click on the framing tab on the left to get started. Because I'm imaging the Cygnus region and there's no specific NGC number for the entire region, I'm gonna put one of the objects in here, NGC 6960, which is the Western veil vale of the Cygnus loop. That's gonna populate the RA and deck of the images that we're gonna to want to pull into the framing. Make sure you have HIPS2 fit survey selected here. I find that that gives you the best images. Then you're going to want to choose a wide field of view. I usually go between seven and 10 degrees. Here you can click load images and it may take a minute or two for your images to load depending on your internet connection. Once it has loaded the image, it will be available up in the image source under cache for you to reuse again later offline. We're then going to zoom out to make sure that we can see everything and you can see a white border with a slightly lighter color on the inside. This is the field of view that our camera sensor is going to be able to look at. Now you want to fill out your own camera parameters on the left here with the width and height in pixels, the pixel size of your camera and the focal length of your telescope. And you can see here, if I edit the focal length of my telescope, it'll change the field of view. Today though, I am going to be using my RedCat 51, which has a reasonably wide field of view. Let, next up, let's work how many image panels we're going to need to get the result that we want. To start off, let's set the overlap percentage. I usually use something between 15 and 25% here, depending how many stars I expect to see in the region. Later on, when we go to edit our mosaics, you're going to use those stars in the overlap region to align the images together. So if you're imaging from a region that doesn't have many stars, or you have a lot of background noise that reduces the amount of stars that you can see here, make sure you choose a higher percentage to help with the image alignment later on. You can then click and drag to drag your frame around. Here, I'm going to add a second vertical panel. Then we can change the rotation of the camera sensor to best fit the object that we want to image. Here, I think about 20 degrees looks good. It lines those sides bits up parallel with the side of the sensor, which I think will look really nice. One quick thing to note here is you don't want to put the edge of your frame right next to a really bright star. If you do, you can sometimes get weird artifacting from the star's light hitting your camera sensor, even if it's not quite in frame. So make sure you do leave a little bit of space around that. Once you're happy with how the mosaic looks, you want to name the target by changing the name of the coordinates up here. Here I'm going to call mine Cygnus Loop Mosaic. Then you want to come down, add target to sequence, sequencer, and choose one of the sequence targets down here. You'll probably only have the basic sequence target to start. That's fine. Now we're ready to move over to the sequencer tab if it hasn't already taken you there. 
click on the sequencer on the left and click Advanced Sequencer. Here we're going to tell Nina all of the steps we want it to take in which order to get the results that we want of the images. So first up, let's do some basic sequence setup and wrap up. We're gonna start off by cooling our camera down. So drag the cool camera across, set the temperature you want. I usually go for negative 10 degrees Celsius and I do that over a two minute period to prevent any dew forming on the lens. Then we're gonna make sure that the telescope is no longer parked so it's ready to move and we're ready to start. Quickly jumping over to the wrap up section so that when we finish our imaging, our telescope and camera warm themselves back up nicely and point back to their parked position. So we're gonna start by dragging the park telescope right down the bottom. We're gonna make sure that we're no longer guiding. We then wanna warm our camera back up. And finally, because we're gonna be taking flat frames, we wanna make sure that the flat frame is turned off. So I'm gonna drag set switch value down the bottom with a value of zero. This is how I manage my flat frame. Yours may be different depending on how you use it. Okay, Nina is now set up from the start and finish. Let's get into the fun bit of creating the mosaic. Firstly, drag over a new deep sky object sequence. Then we wanna add in a sequential instruction set into the instructions. Inside this, we're gonna put all of our setup and imaging. Let's start off with a slew to RA and deck. This is gonna point the telescope in the rough direction of the object that we wanna image so that we can run our autofocus. If you're autofocusing, drag it in. If you're manually focusing, it's at this point where you can instead drag in a message box, name it, focus. It will then pop up the message, giving you time to put on your baton of mask and do your manual focusing. Then we want to slew, center, and rotate. If you have a camera rotator, this will automatically rotate your camera. It will then plate solve to make sure that you're imaging at the correct point. If you don't have a camera rotator, it will ask you to manually rotate your camera. Up under equipment, rotator, if you set this to manual rotator here, it will open a prompt and tell you exactly how far in degrees you need to rotate your camera and guide you through the process of getting the correct rotation. Next up, let's start guiding. Now we're ready to take our exposures. So we wanna add in smart exposure. I'm gonna start by taking 15 images at 240 seconds each. They are light frames. For the 294 monochrome, I'm gonna do two by two binning, but for most cameras, you want a one by one binning. 240 gain, the default offset, the current filter, and we wanna dither every, every one frame. There is one thing I forgot here, and that is to switch filters. So before we jump in here, I'm gonna set my filter to hydrogen alpha because I'm gonna be doing this in narrowband. So this is our full imaging setup. Now let's get on to taking flats. So again, back under the instructions, we're gonna grab another sequential instruction set, but drag it outside of the existing sequential instruction set. In fact, we're gonna name this first one light frames. The second one we can name flat frames. This is gonna allow us to automatically take flats so that we can remove any dust spots and vignetting really easily in post-processing. To do this, I'm gonna point my telescope at the flat panel, which is attached to the wall of my balcony. You can see exactly how that looks up here and take my flat frames that way. If you have a different way of taking your flats, perhaps you'll want to point your telescope straight up rather than how I do horizontally at my flat panel so that you can lay your flat panel on top of your telescope. So first up, we wanna stop our guiding. Then we wanna stop our tracking. So we're gonna set our tracking to stopped. We then want to slew to alt as, which will allow us to give exact coordinates of where we want it to go. And for me, my flat panel is located at four and four for altitude and azimuth. This is the point at which if you're using a tablet, you may wanna point your telescope vertically so that you can lay your flat panel straight on top. So instead you'd wanna use the alt as for whatever you want to do there. Then we wanna set the switch value to one. This will turn my flat panel on. Here we wanna take many exposures. I usually take between five and 10 flats each session. For me, I know I need 30 second exposures for my hydrogen alpha filter for my flats. Set it to flat frames, match the binning of the flat frame to your smart exposure frame. 
And again, we can do 120 gain and leave the offset at default. Next up, I'm just gonna set the flat panel to turn back off afterwards so that it's not putting out all of that nasty light pollution. Now we are mostly done, but there's one more thing that I forgot, and that is to set our tracking when we start to sidereal so that our telescope is tracking the sky on its own. Then we need to add two triggers. This is gonna make sure that nothing too bad happens to your telescope when you're imaging. First is Meridian Flip. So search for Meridian Flip and drag it into the trigger section of the deep sky object sequence. This will make sure that if your object passes the Meridian and you have your Meridian Flip set up in Nina, it will automatically go through the Meridian Flip and recenter your telescope afterwards. The next is AF after filter change. Drag that into the triggers as well. This will mean if you have a filter wheel and you change your filters, it will automatically refocus after that filter change. You don't necessarily need this, and if you have your filter offset set up, then Nina will automatically change between those offsets. But I usually prefer this as I usually image for a couple of hours at a time before I change my filter, and this will then allow me to make sure that my autofocus is perfectly crisp for the new filters. Finally, at the top, you want to move across to the target section. Here you can see that I have my Cygnus Loop Mosaic Panel 1 and Panel 2 that were imported from before in the framing section. Here I can drag the Cygnus Loop up to the top of the Deep Sky object, and there it is. We are now ready to take our first frame. If you plan to take one frame per night, then you can simply save this sequence, image as it is, come back tomorrow, reset, and drag Cygnus Loop Mosaic Panel 2 up the top. However, if you're planning on taking multiple sequences in a night, you can minimize this, duplicate it, and drag Cygnus Loop Panel 2 across into the second one. This way, when Nina finishes the first of your panels, it'll go automatically straight on to the second one. Now we're ready to head outside, connect all of our gear up to the laptop, and wait for the images to begin rolling in. I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something. Remember to subscribe if you'd like to follow along with the next installment, which is going through how to edit and combine all your images into a beautiful mosaic. My name is Rowan, and I hope to see you in the next installment. Clear skies.